Okay, so this video is going to be about ordinal regression. Now, ordinal regression is, as, as the name suggests, when you have an ordinal outcome, so an outcome variable which is categorical, but those categories can be placed into a meaningful order. Um, in this example, we're going to look at um, the maths tiering at age 14 exams in England, which means which ability group um, students are put in for their maths exam. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean if we go down to variable view and the variable is called K3 Mattia. If I can find it. I can't find it. There it is. <laughs> so if we click on the in the values box we can see that um, it's arranged such that um, 0 is tiers 3 to 5, 1 is tiers 4 to 6, 2 tiers 5 to 7 and 3 tiers 6 to 8. So there's a, a sort of clear ordinal effect, effect as you go up the values. Um, students are entered for higher tiers. Now these these tiers actually refer to national curriculum levels, and these ranges are um, the extent to which uh, is the range that you can score if you're entered into that particular exam. So if you're entered into the the bottom exam, the bottom tier, three to five, then the maximum you can get is level five. Whereas in the top tier, the maximum you can get is level 8. So it obviously has a big effect on the, the possible national curriculum level that a student can actually achieve. Um, obviously, there's a danger of being entered in one of the higher ones. If you're, Say if your ability is actually tier 5 and you're entered into the tier 6 to 8, you could end up failing the exam. So it's quite an important um, sort of high-stakes decision uh, that needs to be made f on behalf of the teachers which, in, as to which... Um, one of these tiers students are entered into. So what we're going to be doing then is creating an, an ordinal regression model which predicts which of these tiers students are entered for based on a number of explanatory variables. Um, so let's let's start going about doing that. If we click on Analyze, Regression and Ordinal, we get um, the sort of the, the 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 classic sort of regression window. You'll notice that in this case we've got covariance and factors, and dependent. <laughs> so sometimes the terminology you've probably noticed changes depending on the the exact um, type of regression you're doing. But the dependent variable is our outcome variable. So that is uh, this K3 Mattia here, which you can see is ordinal, indicated by this sort of rising bar chart icon that's next to it. So we put that into the dependent box. Um, Covariates are factors which are, are basically continuous. They're explanatory variables which are continuous. So if we wanted to put something like um, KS3 stand, which was our age 14 score, which we've used in the past, into the model that we would put as a covariate, we're actually going to put um, social economic class in as a covariate. Even though you could argue that it's ordinal, there are enough sort of levels of social economic class. I think there's eight that you can actually use it as a covariate. So we'll find SEC2, I'll explain the two a little later, and put that in the covariates box. Um, the factors are just any categorical explanatory variables which we want to include. So we'll include um, ethnicity, um, and again it's called, we'll, we'll use uh, ethnic2, and I'll explain that sort of sh in, in a little while, and gender. So we'll create a, a fairly sort of um, simple model at this stage. Now to explain these, um, uh, why, why we've got slightly recoded versions of these two two variables, um, it's because of the way that um, ordinal regression, but not logistic regression as we've seen previously, changes the reference category. Um, so for ethnicity, let me just remove this if I can. Um, so for ethnicity, uh, find ethnic two, right down the bottom there, um, we've had to move eight, to value eight to become white British. This is because um, for ordinal regression, that it automatically takes the final category as the reference category. If you remember for logistic regression, you're, you're given the choice, but for ordinal regression, it automatically chooses the final category, which used to be zero, of course. Uh, we used to code white British as zero, and we choose white British as the ethnic um, reference category because it's just the one that makes most sense. It's the most um, frequently used category 
in our data set so that that's that's the reason we've had to slightly recode the ethnicity um, variable and um, the reason for recoding the SEC2 the social economic class variable is slightly different we've actually if you look just subtracted one from each case um, and again the reference group is never work long-term unemployed but we wanted um, zero to have some sort of meaning in the regression so before um, this was uh, the higher managerial and professional occupations was uh, valued at one but because the intercept for any sort of um, linear part of the regression model so for any continuous part of the regression model is is going to be zero we just wanted the zero the, the value zero to have some meaning so that's why we recoded that particular variable uh, now hopefully it's remembered oh it's forgotten so uh, <laughs> we'll quickly rebuild it here um so we'll just just to define our our remaining variables so we're putting k3 matia as the dependent variable SEC2 as a covariate and ethnic2 and gender as the factors. So as before, before we actually click OK and run the regression analysis, we're going to need to alter some of the options. Um, so you've got these four buttons here. The ones we're interested in are output and location. Let's start with output. Um, so these ones are automatically checked. The parameter estimates, which is sort of your coefficients table, that's probably the most important one, but you also get summary statistics and goodness and fit statistics. All of these are important and we'll see why when we actually run the analysis in, in a few short moments. Um, we also can get um, something called cell information, which uh, gives us a little bit more information about the categorical variables within the data set. Um, I won't check it this time because the table tends to be quite big, um, but it is useful to have. Um, and the test of parallel lines, which I will check, that's the, the test of the assumption of proportional odds. Now, I'm not going to try and explain the assumption in this video. The best thing to do is probably head to the website because I'll, I'll probably do quite a poor job of explaining it now anyway. But it's, it's quite a tricky concept, but it's a very important assumption in ordinal regression. So it's very important to test for it. And I'll show you how to interpret the the test itself in a few minutes. Um, you can also save uh, variables as it, to your data set. So if you um, wanted to, exam for example, find out what the predicted category was for each individual case within the data set, you could check that box and a new variable would be created and you, it, the predicted category would be shown for each case. Um, the estimated response probabilities are really useful too. This actually creates lots of new variables, one for for each level of your ordinal outcome variable and tells you the probability that that case will be in that particular um, outcome category. Um, so that's useful too, but we won't get all of that information now, but, but it's just uh, it's just important to know about really. So click continue and location. I'll only talk about this briefly, but this is where you come if you wanted to add interaction terms to your model. So at the moment it's a main effects model and we've got the, our three variables there as main effects. If we wanted to change this, we could click on custom and add interaction effects, such as, um, let's show an example of a two-way interaction. So we wanted to include an interaction effect for ethnicity and social economic class. So we pick ethnicity, hold down control on the, on the keyboard and click SEC2 and then click here and it would add um, ethnic two by social economic class two at this this two way um, interaction into our model but this is because we just want to sort of show you the basics in this particular model we're not going to include any interaction effects but if you want to find out more about interaction effects then we recommend you check out the website because we do run through a full example there uh, click OK to close this window and that is everything so we can click OK to run the analysis